For me, eating in the open air is all about fire and smoke, and there's nothing that hits the taste buds better than hot smoked fish. And the great thing about this dish is it's so simple to make. Imagine pulling a dish like this out of the bag for your mates over a campfire. It will blow them away. What I'm going to do is proper sort of Cub Scout stuff, even though I got kicked out of the Scouts. Don't worry about that. Don't judge me on that. You can go and buy a smoker, but I don't want you to go and buy a smoker because, to be honest, all you need is a bucket. And in my life, I am surrounded by buckets. Right, so we put holes in the bottom for airflow. Very, very simple. So fill a bucket with about three inches of white hot charcoal from the barbecue. Then I've got some wood chips here, uh, which you can buy, you know, from garden centres and stuff like that, or get a pen knife and just, just do a pile of splinters. You want to use things like oak, apple, cherry woods. So you don't want anything oily like pine. You can see the smoke coming off it now, dead simple. Over here, I've got some prawns and trout. OK, so first of all, I've just got some nice big prawns. I've taken the shell off. Let me show you how to do one. Hold the head, just crack off the body shell, pull that off, and go right down and leave the tail fin on, just because it looks quite cool and it's good to hold on to. So peel that off like that, and then skewer it. And then just lay these, just like that, then I want you to get a load of skewers, wooden, everyday skewers. You can use metal ones if you want, and just lay it across, almost like a game of kiplonk, right? Crisscross like that. Then I've got some trout fillets, everyday trout fillets here. You could use salmon, some seasoning. We could even get some lemon zest if you want. Just give it some freshness and some brightness. And then I'm going to lay that trout over the kiplonk, flesh side down, and the smoke will come around and it will kiss the fish. And then all you have to do is get a wet cloth. I'm just going to lay it over the top like that, and that means it's holding all the smoke in. So that bucket now is just full of, like, foggy smoke. And it's only going to take about five to seven minutes to cook. With that smoky, silky fish, I want to make a punchy dressing. So it's 50-50 horseradish sauce to yoghurt and a good pinch of salt and pepper and a squeeze of lemon. I just think this is exciting, you know. As a dad of a little boy now, I can't wait to teach little buddy how to do this. I love the fact that, you know, if you teach your kid to do it, he'll probably do it with his kids. And I just love, love, love all that sort of stuff. So, look, I'm really pleased with that. Got me sauce done. I got me smoker on. Yeah, I'm going to make a lovely little salad. Finely slice some onion, OK? Season with salt and a nice squeeze of lemon. Then massage it all over to take the heat out of the onion. Get some watercress and some good old-fashioned cress and dress with a little olive oil. Job done. Then we come to our fish. Right, these will be done by now. I pretty much know when fish is cooked, when you can pull the skin off. Look at that. Let's pick up this fillet. I'm going to let gravity flake it. Just let it bust cooked in its own juices. It's such an intelligent way to cook. And then look. What's quite interesting is all the heads did fall off, off with your head, right? But what's quite lovely is the flavour of prawns is in the head, right? So as the head falls on the charcoals, right, all of the oils from the shell and the flavour turns into smoke. Do you know what I mean? You're just sort of atomising brains. Yeah! Uh. That's what all this is about. Just dress it with a little lemon juice and, of course, olive oil. I love the little dream of going away with the family with a, an old fire bucket, you know, full of a few little things to do this. Imagine, and like, you know, picnic, but not as you know it. For me, that's what this kind of summer festival food season is all about. Do you know what I mean? It's about the unexpected, it's about bigging it up. It's about surprising yourself with things you can do. So there you go, beautiful smoked fish, prawns, trout, horseradish sauce, and a lovely little watercress and onion salad. Happy days. Bang it in your gob. Absolutely gorgeous.
For me, cooking outside is about getting back to basics, you know? There's no electrical equipment, you know, it's about fire, wood, seasoning, sort of using your hands, bashing things, and that's where the flavour comes from. So now me and my mate Gennaro are going to go caveman styly and cook over flames. We're going to show you three great ways to cook over fire using sticks and stones, and I guarantee that this will taste so much better than cooking in a boring old oven. First up, we're going to get the skewers. I need two sticks standing like that. The other one that goes on oh, for top. a spit. For the spit. Right. And, uh, so you're going to find sticks for a spit. I'm going yeah. to find sticks for skewers. Yeah. Well, have a look. Yeah, Don't a claim look. it a tree. <laughs> oh, perhaps you want me to claim it a tree. Is there, like, types of wood that you mustn't use? Uh, no, you use almost everything. OK, look, this is what we're actually looking. So, basically, what we got is... Um, Gennaro's got a perfect stick here for doing the spit roast. So that'll go in the ground, and then this will hold the spit. Are you going to get another one? Well, let me just go get another one inside um, here. That concept of cooking over a spit was absolutely one of the oldest, you know, methods of cooking for centuries and oh, thousands of years. Also, <clears throat> it's green. You see, the world is very green. And what that means when he says something's green, it's like it means it's still alive, it's still full of sap. And, and the benefit of that is, of course, it doesn't burn and catch on fire really quickly. So if you're ever going to make a spit, you really don't want to make it out of old wood that's dry, because it will just go up like the fire. Right, we've got sticks, we've dug a big old pit, and we've made fire using logs. After about an hour, the coals are super hot and ready to cook over. Now for the spit roast. This is the ultimate kind of Huckleberry Finn spit roast, isn't it, big boy? Yeah, this is what I'm going to I mean, do you it. have done a few spit roasts in your time, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, quite a few. Lovely memory. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> so what actually has done, you can see, two long fork. If you use just one skewer, the thing you've skewered is just going to rotate around the round. Yeah. So by putting two skewers, it literally, you can turn it and it holds. So now we're going to use our two large skewers to roast our chicken, spatchcock style. It's a great way to cook chicken over fire because it cooks through quicker and more evenly. I'm using a small chicken. Just cut through the backbone and flatten it out with the palm of your hand. Got lots of salt at the moment. And before the salt police come in here, we're using rock salt, and most of it's going to fall off. It's going to be hanging, suspended. And then the stick, I just pointed a little bit. I go one side, right the other side. Then pierce the chicken with a second sharpened stick. Tell them about the concept of the two rods. The concept to have two, then you see they're moving around. You can cook me even, you can control. Basically, the chicken does what you tell it to when you turn yeah. the stick. <sighs> Put it on then, big boy. It stays on top. Fantastic like that. We're gonna baste the chicken in a lovely marinade of mint, chili, garlic lemon and olive oil. And Gennaro's made a wicked rosemary broomstick to brush it on. Look at that skin. That is what all this fuss is about. That's what you're trying to achieve. We just look after it. Chili, mint, olive oil, lemon juice. That's the point. Take your time, get it good. Yeah, yes. The smell is unbelievable. The smell is there. It makes you twist. My next tip is really simple. I'm going to use one sharpened green stick to cook this beautiful trout over the fire pit. The first time I went fly fishing with Gennaro, I caught a trout that big. Nine pounds. And no one believed me. It was me. a brown trout. No one believed me. I've got pictures. So it's been gutted, it's been scaled. I'm just going to lightly score the skin just down here. Because it's a slightly oily fish, it's quite forgiving as well if you're a beginner cook. So if you slightly overcook it, it's still flaky and delicious. So I'm going to go in through the tail here. Proper huckleberry fin. I'm going to go through this side, just twizzle it a bit. So it's almost looking like it's swimming again, do you know what I mean? And you can see how these little scores have opened up. Now I'm going to flavour the trout with some incredible seasoning. Crushed fennel seeds, salt, pepper, and stuff it with any light herbs like thyme, bay, dill. That's going to steam and give an amazing flavour. And then what's quite nice is you can put a chunk of lemon at the end of the skewer. And then as that roasts and chars, it basically turns into a glorified marmalade. So let's get barbecue jamming. Now, let me just do this for you, Jamie. Just bore me out a hole. So push it nice and deep. 
hang it over the fire. Get, you can get like a little prop here, just to sort of angle the dangle. And just let it cook. The skin will go crispy, it will protect the fish, the fish will be flaky and juicy. Now, if you thought cooking with sticks was caveman enough, think again. We're going to cook some delicious thin slices of ribeye on a hot rock. I'll put the stone in here, which will be screaming hot. It's in there for a reason. Stones hold on to heat really, really efficiently. Just put some oil onto a rock. We season some steak, put it straight onto the rock. Yeah! The and this I is a beautiful it. way to this cook. This is the way I love it. Very simple, very humble, really old-fashioned. I mean, this is what they would have done. It's just brilliantly simple, back to basics, cooking with fire. They're pretty much done. Just cook them on one side. That's what I do. Cook them on one side. Look at that. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Janelle, try, 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 try. I try, I try, I try. I've been... So good. I've been... Oh, my God. Oh, my God, I've been... Oh, I've been... This lemon, it's just all puffed up and puffed up. It's like jam in there. Look how juicy the flesh is here. If I just push it, it just flakes away. Janai, are you ready? Can I? Of course I'm ready. Can I have a fish? Nah, dip it in you. that juice. Dip it in that juice. Oh, my god. Oh, my god. It's not just about the herbs. It's about the dryness of the heat. If you think about it, a conventional oven, when the moisture comes out, it sort of stays in there. It's so dry here. So it makes the skin go incredible. Oh, my goodness me. So that chicken looks amazing. Ah, I'm going to put go all this it. on top. Absolutely gorgeous. Oh, look at how it's coming out of the skin. And look at that. Joyous, gnarly. For me, it's all about that. Mm. Oh, my lord. Mm. Brilliant. That is what barbecuing is all about. Whether you're an adult or a kid, one of my favourite things to have on a hot summer's day is a lolly. So I'm going to show you how to make your very own healthy fruit juice lollies it's the easiest thing to put together, and who doesn't love the magic of turning liquid into ice? OK, so we're going to make homemade lollies, right? It's such a brilliant thing to do. It's so simple. You can get these off the internet in cooking shops, all different shapes and sizes. They're exciting. Kids go mad for them. Even I nick them, to be honest, when they're not looking. My lollies start off as actually a genuine drink for the family at the weekend, right? So, you know, we have a bit of ice, you know, we're squeezing in some orange with our great helpers here. Now, what are your names, guys? Mina. Mina. Emil. Emil, right? So they're my helpers today, right? So I always pretty much in a lolly have orange in there, maybe even a little squeeze of lemon juice to give you that little zing on your tongue. Can I just squeeze over there? Look at that. Boom! <laughs> Fruit juice, even though it's wonderfully good for you, it's still full of a lot of sugar, so we're always going to knock it back with plenty of water. Can you pour that in for me, sweetheart, right up to the top? You can tweak the flavour of your juice with many different things like tangerine, limes, or even just a little bit of mint. Emil, scrunch that up in a ball in your hand and really, like, pinch it and squash it and really poke it and give it some of that. Lovely. Give it a good old stir up. Now it's time to grab a handful of soft fruit, like cherries, strawberries, raspberries, you name it. Anything will do, and let the kids squeeze it in. Cherry juice, heavenly. When it's good, it's good. Little things like that, tangerine, pineapple, any of those flavours are going to make this so joyous. Darling, just pour that into here for me. If you can make a delicious drink, if it's delicious now, it'll be delicious as a lolly, OK? So let's have a little sip of that, kids. Is it up to scratch? It's good. Do you like that? OK, so, kids, let's pour it in these moulds. Now, should we freeze these guys? Yeah. OK, sadly, I'm not magic, but I've got a little surprise for you. Would you like to see it? Yeah. Wait here. Let's see what I've got. So whack them in the freezer for a few hours and, hey, presto, lovely lollies. Ah! <laughs> I know. OK, try and pull one out. They should just pop straight out. And you can see what I did here. I just threw in some raspberries. You can put in bits, little bits of strawberries. You can almost freeze it like a stained glass window. Have a go on that. Would you like to try a rocket one? Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> look, look at that rocket with strawberries in it. Come on. How nice is that? Thank you very much for being my helpers. 
Do you think you'll have a go at making lollies at home? So there you go, and that's probably the most efficient way of getting the kids to have one or two of their five a day. It's not just steak and sausages that you can enjoy outside in the sunshine. This is a great dish whether you're a vegetarian or a meat eater. Great for barbecues, the dosa is a delicious South Indian pancake that you can eat one-handed, leaving your other hand free for your beer. Right, guys, I could not be happier. I'm going to show you how to make an incredible Indian street food dish. It's dead simple, humble ingredients. You are going to love this one. Let's get on with it. We're going to make a kind of batter. I'm using gram flour, which is made from chickpeas, and you'll find it in a lot of Indian recipes. I'm going to have one cup of that with one cup of plain flour, along with a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda and a pinch of salt, and two heaped teaspoons of mustard seeds. Then add enough water to make a loose batter. Now, the traditional recipe, they would actually ferment for about two days. But I've tested and tested this. I'm really happy with it. So just add that water to the flour, and we can start using this batter straight away. I've got potatoes and sweet potatoes. Right? I've cooked them in ash, but you can do it in the oven, no problem. And we're going to flavor them with really easily achievable Indian spices and flavors. Firstly, scoop out the soft, nutty insides. So just mush them up a little bit, like a plasterer. So we've got potatoes and sweet potatoes here, but there's no attitude, and I want attitude. So I've got a hot pan. I'm going to go in with some oil. We're going to spice it up with one heaped teaspoon of mustard seeds, one teaspoon of turmeric, which will give it an amazing colour, some fresh ginger, and finely sliced chilli. I'm using two. Look at those colours. Summertime, in a nutshell. That is going to put attitude in there. You just know it. Look at the sizzle on that. You know that's going to taste good. Then it's just a matter of squeezing, scrunching. Let's just put it in simple terms. This is an Indian glorified mashed potato. Then I'm going to hit it up with some lime chopped spring onions and some fresh coriander. So I've got the filling and I've got the batter. Let's make one. You want a nice thin pancake, so make sure you move the batter all over the pan. What you're going to get is a crispy, cracky bottom, soft inside, and then I'm going to roll this stuff in the middle. It's going to be joyous. As soon as the moisture on the top starts to cook away, spoon on the spicy potato filling. See, like, I'm pulling it back now, and it ain't got that crack. See, it's, it's just too blonde. It's got to be snappy. If it ain't snappy, it ain't a dosa. Can you see it, like, crack and bust? That is what I'm talking about. Oh, it's perfect. That, brothers and sisters, is a dosa. I'm serving this with a traditional coconut chutney, but you can also dish this up with some coriander yogurt or some zingy tomato salsa. You know, anything acidic. Anything that cuts is rock and roll. To finish it off, you know, if you want to be camp, and I'm feeling a bit camp right now, I've had a couple of beers, who knows what's going to happen. Have a little rip up, some coriander, and a bit of the old limey. Mmm. Joy to the hilt. Proper. A little bit of the old salsa. Mmm. For my final outdoor recipe, I'm going to show you how to pimp up a humble homemade barbecue burger. It's a Moroccan lamb burger served with harissa, sour cream, and a leaf and pomegranate salad. And it's dead easy to make. 
I don't want to put anything in the patty, right, the burger. No salt, no flavours. I want to keep it like beautiful British lamb or local lamb, wherever you are. And then on the outside, I'm going to make a little rub here. To start with, I add a teaspoon of pepper, salt and coriander powder to half a teaspoon of cumin and a teaspoon of paprika. And rasa hanout, which basically is a classic Moroccan spice. You can buy it in good supermarkets or go garam masala. It's a blend of spices. So a teaspoon of that. Muddle it all up. People can be sometimes too tempted to flavour burgers, right? Just straight meat, and then on the outside, it's rubbed with this attitude, like spice, arr, attack, you know? So you bite through it, and then you get the hot, you get the spices, you get the layers of flavour, and then you just get beautiful sweet meat. That's my theory. Just grab like a snowball of meat. Um, shoulder of lamb is a good one. It's that perfect blend of sweet, delicious meat and like natural fat. So it's going to give you heaven, right? Just patty it. And don't worry about it not being perfect. You want it to sort of like fall apart in your mouth. You want it to be delicious, yeah? Dust it with some Moroccan spices and a little olive oil to make sure it's well coated. The point of this is contrast. Sweet meat attitude crust, like a bark. It's starting to sizzle and you'll see the fat drip off. It will hit the charcoal. As soon as it hits the charcoal, it like atomizes into smoke. <laughs> the smoke comes up, kisses the patty. And that is what outside cooking is all about. We only get a bit of sun a couple of months of the year, so get outside and light that barbecue. There's something quite hypnotising about fire. There's always a little moment when you go... That's what we want. It might look a little bit burnt, but it's not. It's the spices and the caramelising, like, lamb fat. I'm going to put this round the edge just to warm through. We've got this like barky sweet lamb attitude on the outside. I want something refreshing, but I also want to like a up the jacksy. So I'm bringing in a kick of chili by adding a tablespoon of harissa to four heaped tablespoons of yogurt. This is a proper rose harissa, it's like a chili sauce. A nice squeeze of lemon and a glug of olive oil. Ripple it up. Lamb and mint are bosom buddies, so dress it up with some lemon-soaked mint leaves, some round lettuce and some edible flowers. You want a little bit of happiness and joy. And top with lemon juice and olive oil. And then a little surprise in there, pomegranate. Those little capsules of sweetness. Spices are going to go blah, 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 on your mouth. Soft bun. Mm -hmm. Harissa and yogurt, oh, I'm nice. No, I'm not. Bit of salad, healthy. And that probably is the nearest thing to food porn ever in the world. Yep. Yep. Uh-huh. Mmm.